Hello and welcome. It's great to have you back on the channel. In this particular video, we are going to look at applications of data science in the various fields. And this field, uh, today we are going to talk about textiles. And I used to work in textiles before. And here I have a book of samples of fabrics. And I'll show you up close. This is one fabric that's in here, which has threads that are running uh, horizontally, which are called the web and threads that are running vertically which are called the warp and one of the tasks that we used to have in textiles is counting the number of threads in horizontal and vertical directions and that's needed to characterize the fabric and in this video it's not about coding we are just going to show you how that can be applied how we can use python how we can use image analysis to count these threads in the fabric and i'll show you a couple of images that kind of show the potential of what uh, data science can do for you. And if you have any suggestions or fields of interest, please feel free to add them in the comments below. And I'll definitely look into it and create interesting videos of applications of data science in those fields as well. So let's get started and look at the fabrics and pictures and what we can do with uh, textiles using data science. Right, let's go. To understand today's video, here is a small story about what textiles is and how do we go from fiber to fabrics. Uh, imagine a cotton plant. It has fibers and those fibers can be converted into yarn by various textile processes. And then can, those f yarns can be used into products such as apparels, hot air balloons, medical textiles, geotextiles. So there are lots of applications. So how does one go from fiber to fabric? Here is one of the stages where the cotton, yeah, a cotton that is uh, raw cotton, it, it's fed into blow room. There are a couple of machines before this. And then there is this machine called as carding. It has, as you can see, a bunch of rollers with lots of spikes on them. What they do is they basically tear apart the balls of cotton and individualize them into uh, more separate fibers and those fibers are uh, lined here and then they are collected in a bin uh, which has a very thick strand of cotton fibers and then after that there are a bunch more processes which later lead to this stage where the cotton fibers now are in pretty good shape they are aligned uh, along the length and they are clean and here what happens is they go through a spinning process where there are these rollers which are moving at different speeds and they stretch out the fibers that are coming in the and what that does is the tufts of fibers they get thinner and thinner and thinner and finally when they come down here they are this there is a bobbin that's spinning fast and it kind of twists the fibers that are coming down and it that's where the yarn is formed so this is also called as a thread and these are then used in weaving. So here is a setup where the yarns that we saw in the previous slide, those are wound on these giant beams. These are called as warper beams. And if there are, as you can see, these are arranged parallel. So there are lots of threads there. The number of threads on that beam are the same as number of threads we get in the final fabric. And they go through these mechanisms where the different sets of fibers are lifted up and down. And while they are lifted, there is a weft yarn that's a horizontal yarn that's passed through the shed that's formed by the opening of these two uh, uh, layers of the yarns. And after that, these change direction, they switch. So this comes down and this one goes up and that way uh, the yarns always weave this particular weft that's moving horizontally like this and there is another mechanism which is called as a sleigh and that what it does is it moves like this forward and backward so that pushes the in newly inserted thread forward and that's how this fabric is created right here and this fabric is then wound on this uh, beam right here so that's a very short brief summary of how does how one goes from a fiber to fabric now what happens is once we have the fabric right here 
it it needs to be characterized so uh, the one of the two there are two important terms that I like to mention one is warp and one is weft so warp is the these are the threads or yarn that are running parallel along the machine direction which are these here yellow and black and then there are weft which we inserted horizontally and those are shown here in blue so it's important to characterize these uh, get how many warp are there per uh, inch or centimeter and how many weft we have in the fabric per inch or per centimeter so as you can see here the fabric that i showed you earlier this is the picture of that fabric i've also put a scale on the left hand side it's a little tilted but that's okay in the imaging we can straighten it out now as you can see the weft that is in this fabric we can see that it's a horizontal line right here and it's much thicker thread that's running horizontally and warp is this thread which we see a little bit up then it goes down for two threads then it comes back up then it goes down for two threads and comes back up so that's that's the warp and let's move further now for analysis what we are going to do is we are going to use the scale that's shown here and what this scale helps us do is convert the uh, millimeters to pixels connection so here we have around 800 pixels uh, along the vertical axis and we have the millimeters here so we can get the scale as shown below and that's what we are going to use so the final uh, analysis that is done is on this figure that's shown here on the right hand side so this is the very first set of results here we can see on the very left hand side we have the original image uh, the original image is an uh, is uh, has three channels therefore it's a colored image and those channels are essentially uh, sets of arrays so we have an array of numbers that is 800 about 800 by 400 in this particular image and all we are doing in image processing is changing the numbers we are playing with numbers so uh, by default these are stored in arrays that we have talked in other videos as what we do here is we pick just one of those three channels and it becomes a grayscale image and then we and use that image for further analysis in here the next image is segmentation so in segmentation what we are essentially doing is we are uh, high, uh, we are enhancing the areas of that image that we are interested in okay so here we are interested in these warp that are going uh, in vertical direction so we want to count them so the only places they appear are here when they are on top of the other thread so what we want to do here is highlight these threads that are on top of when they appear on the top and segmentation myth there allows us to do that so here what i've done is i've removed all the noise and then i was able to uh, kind of outline them and get them highlighted so we now have clear set of uh, warp threads that we can see here and those we can count you will also see that there is some noise like here and here and there is some noise over here uh, that can be tuned if you want to go into much detail and get it in, uh, ready for implementation somewhere in quality control but this is for just illustration purposes so i've left it as is now on the rightmost side this is uh, where we have done the labeling so now we have these uh, highlighted areas that are shown here now we want to count them we want to count them how many are there per in these many pixels or how many are there in these many millimeters so in this stage uh, we are what we are doing is labeling each of those uh, blobs of yellow okay and though after we list them we can then go ahead and count them so th that that was what we uh, what was done for the vertical threads which is for then moving on to horizontal threads this was a little bit tricky uh, because as you can see the 
although we can by human eye we can clearly see the wave moving like this but when we look at the matrix what the computer sees is right here sorry for this mistake uh, seg ac mean i meant segmentation one and this is segmentation two right here so the the image the second image looks a bit noisy and that is after first segmentation so uh, the second segmentation that is shown here removes that excess noise what it does is it takes into account these yellow highlight yellow green highlighted parts as areas of interest and these dark colors as areas that are not interested so if they are closer to the darker colors in there those are removed and if they are near highlighted colors those are retained so as you can see this is much more clearer image uh, as we can see and then moving on to after second segmentation we can do the final leg labeling where each of these uh, threads that we have now detected those are sorry those are then uh, clearly marked here and we can easily count them so what did we get in the final count what uh, what was the final uh, kind of result so here this slide shows what the image analysis was able to capture uh, when looking at this image taken by just a cell phone not even microscope so here we can see the overlay of yellow lines and those correspond to this horizontal weft yarns that we see in this particular fabric so these threads and you can see that they are much thicker in diameter as compared to these vertical ones so if we count these manually i'll show the counts ju in just a minute so it's really amazing that we are able to capture these uh, yarns on this particular image and similarly we can capture the warp uh, yarn on the this second part of the image where we can see that here let's say this particular yarn that's on top here can be seen marked right over here so the overlay is very promising and it looks like image analysis can definitely be helpful i'm sure it is probably being used somewhere in the world or this was really nice exercise to kind of show the applications of uh, how image analysis can help in analyzing a fabric now let's look at the original data so here what we see on the left hand side are the counts for the original uh, counting that was done under a microscope with multiple samples of the fabric and we can see that they are little farther off from what we've got from in the image analysis and the reason is twofold one is because the image analysis was done here only on one image and there is also room for optimization in the analysis part so i'm pretty sure if those two are done then the readings would definitely be much closer to what we have here on the original data set uh, this has been a really inspiring exercise to see how we can apply imaging python to solve a real world problem such as counting threads in a textile fabric and what we have here is we are just playing with arrays and numbers of arrays and based on that we can use algorithms that are pre-built in python libraries and leveraging those we can actually do pretty good analysis to uh, answers and these types of questions please let me know in the comments below if you like this video i what suggestions you have for any other videos or if there are any topics in the areas that you work in where you'd like to see some overview like this i'll be really interested to know Thank you. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. It helps me mo stay motivated to create more videos for you guys uh, such as this one. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.